Hello, my name's Lizzie Harper from www.lizzieharper.co.uk. I'm a natural history illustrator, so I draw pictures of plants and animals for a living for books, natural history organisations, environmental charities. One of the things I need loads of is reference to work from so that I can get it right. And I get that by keeping my eyes open. So when I'm walking, I'm looking for bones or when I'm taking the kids to school, I'm looking for dead insects on the pavement or road killers I'm driving along. And I always tell everybody, please keep your eyes out. And if you have any natural history finds you don't want, please send them to me. So this is going to be a brief video tour of some of the finds that I've had over the years. And we're going to start off with the shell box. So this is my box of shells. It hasn't only got shells in it, as you'll soon see, but it's got loads of cool stuff in. So there's a shell that's too big for it. So in here we've got things like the carapace of a spider crab, razor shells, got here when I went to Skomer Island, a puffin's leg. This is a toad which is all dried out and which was flattened on the road. Mermaid's egg cases, jaw bones. Oh, this is cool. This is the the skull of a blackbird, I think. Yeah, it is. It's a blackbird skull. Um, and, of course, like I said, shells and pine cones. These are all little periwinkle shells in here. And here I have my collection of, of skulls, which I've got over the years. And these are mostly found from just walking around, actually. So they're quite a lot. And I do a thing with them. Um, sometimes I do workshops for kids. And I always try and get them to match the label with the skull. They're normally really good at it, better than adults, strangely. But we've got some beauties here. So there's a beautiful heron skull. And this is a duck skull that I found. I love how much of the beak is still there. This one, we dug this up in the garden. And it's clearly somebody's old pet dog. Um, something nasty happened to it. There's a hole in the front of its skull. But there we go. This one's still got the feathers in. It's a razor bill. Uh, it's a badger. And this badger is quite interesting. because it Look, on that side... It's all, the bone is swollen, on that side it isn't. So I think, people have told me it's possibly um, signs of TB. Very topical. Uh, rabbit skulls, oh, they're ten a penny. That one, I think, is a rook, or possibly a crow. Another rabbit. Another rabbit. And this little one, is it a weasel skull? Which, again, is quite a find. It's got sharp little teeth, this one has. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so those are my skulls, and I, I think they're great, I think they're beautiful things. I also collect birds' nests if I find them. So this one here is a blue tit, I think, and this one I'm pretty sure is a blackbird's nest. Obviously I wouldn't even look for them in breeding season. And this enormous builder's sack is absolutely full of jackdaws' nests. So the jack we cleared out the attic the other day, and this must be two or three years' worth of jackdaws' nest. And this, also within, is two little jackdaws' eggs. So I'm going to try and blow them later. Right, so here I have a collection of bones. These are all from a dead horse that I found on a walk. Big old shoulder blade. Massive rib bones. And they're quite interesting, actually. Um, and I think it died because they had a broken leg. These are, all, these are all washed up. They're shed carapaces of crabs, which had turned pinkish, I suppose, in the sun. Um, very useful because they look like the living animal down here this is my third drawer down in my chest of drawers and here we have a gift that somebody gave me my chrysocroa beetle and my little blue weevil which is my logo and another beetle and what else do we have in here we've got the skin the shed skin of a grass snake and a de dehydrated grass snake egg we've got oh, stuffed hedgehog that I got off eBay because I was doing something for Festival of the Hedgehog. Got a bottle of chloroform, always useful, and a killing jar which is just plaster in a jar at the back if I have to take on some insects. The shared exoskeleton of a tarantula, again from somebody who was very kind enough to give it to me. Uh, it's a comma butterfly in there. Here's that comma butterfly and here's my collection of insects which I love and when I'm drawing um that's better. When I'm doing workshops with kids, they just go crazy for these. I think it's the colour and also the size of some of them. They're quite dramatic. And I just love, I just love 
the variety of shape and form and colour. They really, they're my favourite things insects are and this box sort of sums up why. In here we have some butterfly wings and also, here we go, somebody had a bit of a disaster with some bats in her attic and so she gave me their desiccated little bodies. So there are my dried out Dibenton's bats. So this is my skull tree where I just keep my skulls because I like the look of them and also in the pot, there we go, this is a skull that I found from a squirrel but I've just been giving it time to let the flesh rot off so I can just get down to the skull itself. I've got various things buried in the garden in net bags which I'm hoping after over a few years will eventually just be bones. And this is where I dry stuff out so this is another dead bat and this one's roadkill actually. And what I'm trying to do with this one is dry it out so that I'll be able to get down to the skeleton or maybe just the body itself and have a look. So it, it's rotting down quite nicely, it's really dried out. And here this is a jay's feather. Just look at those feathers, I mean they're beautiful. And again that it was kind of meaty when I found it and it isn't anymore. So. Right, so this rather sinister image is my deep freeze in the cellar of my house and the top shelf is full of beautiful delights. So I'll just unbag them for you and lay them on, front, on the top of the freezer. So here we have the content of the freezer. Greater spotted woodpecker and this one is a female blackbird. This beaten up creature is a starling. You can see by the speckled chest. This is a little dead mole. I mean just look at his amazing little feet. It doesn't show it very well but I mean they're extraordinary creatures. They're so fit for purpose. This is uh, one of my favourite bits of roadkill. It's a dead swallow. It's just such a beautiful animal. And this is a dead, um, a dead fledgling sparrow who fell out of his nest. Um, oh, and that's a, a little bag of parsley. Nice. Doubles as a freezer. So this is candling eggs, which is an age-old technique. It's easier now with LED lights. But to see if there's anything viable inside. So if I blow these eggs, I want to make sure there's not, it shouldn't be, it's August, any baby birds inside. So you just hold the egg up into the light. And can you see the top bit is clear and the bottom bit is dark. Now if there was a baby bird growing inside then you would actually be able to see the shape of the bird. And this one, it's a cracked egg and you can see it's much more translucent, it's much more see-through. There's almost nothing in that one. Um, obviously it has to be said with bird's eggs it's, it's totally illegal to collect them. These ones were left and deserted in the nest in my attic. It's the only reason why I've got my hands on them. Right so I'm now going to try and blow this egg. I haven't really done this before. I think you make a... Oh! Oh, that's not what you do, but look! That is interesting. Look, look what's going on in there. I'm not inhaling. But yeah, it was, oh, it was a, um, it was a, an egg without, which wasn't viable. So there we go. So I failed miserably to blow it, but at least I know. And there wasn't an embryonic jackdaw in there. So that's got to be a result, isn't it? Anyway, I very much hope that you enjoyed this tour of my specimens. Um, I'm now going to show a few examples of the paintings I've done using these reference um, things. And for more examples of my work, please check out my website, www.lizzieharper.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for your time. Bye-bye.